be sure to have the following tools ready when setting up your machine. A box cutter or blade to cut open the packaging, a pry bar, a crowbar, or large screwdriver and hammer to separate the shipping skids from the machine, a bubble level for leveling the machine, a 1 3 8 inch or adjustable open end wrench, and a screwdriver with a Phillips head. Your machine was thoroughly inspected before leaving the factory and the delivery carrier has accepted responsibility for this machine. It is very important that you inspect the exterior of all cartons for damage upon receipt from the freight line. Damage in transit, although infrequent, does happen. Nearly all damage in transit can be determined from a visual inspection of cartons. Look for any damage to the cardboard corners. The machines are shipped in clear plastic. Look for tears in the plastic and inspect them closely. Take photos of any external damage to packaging before removing it. If this visual inspection reveals nothing, then the machine has probably been received in good condition. If any carton is received in a damaged condition, it is very important that you follow these steps. First, note any damage on the freight line's delivery receipt. Specify where the damage is located. Take photos of the damage. Second, contact the factory at 800-247-1787 for additional instructions. Send photos of the damage to damage at witchern.com. Include serial number and tracking number of shipment. Again, please inspect all equipment thoroughly before signing for it and before the driver leaves. Any questions pertaining to damaged equipment should be referred to the factory. Follow these steps to remove the shipping skids. Use a Phillips head screwdriver or powered screwdriver to remove the screws on both crossboards and lift the boards out. Then remove the screws on the side to take out the two lifting blocks. If the crossbar is still wedged underneath, removing the final pieces of wood will dislodge it. To split the wood from the legs, drive a screwdriver or crowbar in the slit in the wood. Use the hammer to knock away the wood from the legs. Discard the wood skids when removed. Leveling the machine is an important step. A level machine allows the door to operate and close properly as well as other items within the machine to move correctly. Properly leveling the door and the cabinet is essential to a well working machine. The door will lock easily and the cabinet will seal correctly with the door and the baffle to provide security. Using a level, place it on top of the machine. Do not put the bubble level on the door, but instead make sure it is on the cabinet. Using a 1 3 8 open end wrench, adjust the cabinet legs until the machine is level from side to side and front to back. Locate the power cord here on the back of the machine. Loosen these four Phillips screws to remove the cover and place it off to the side. Now take out the power cord. Make sure the power cord is securely and properly plugged into the machine here. During transit, the vibration can cause this to become unplugged. Now place the power cover back on here. The power cord goes out through the cover here. Attach the cord to the back of the machine here before plugging it into the wall. It's important to remember to make sure your machine power button is off before plugging the machine into the wall. Also, before plugging the power cord to the wall socket, the integrity of the main electrical supply must be checked for correct polarity, presence of a good ground, and the correct voltage. These checks should be repeated at six month intervals with routine safety electrical testing of the vendor itself. If the receptacle is not properly grounded or polarized, contact a licensed electrician to correctly polarize and or ground the receptacle to ensure safe operation. For proper operation of any equipment utilizing electronically controlled components, the equipment should be placed on an isolated or dedicated noise-free circuit properly polarized and grounded. Refer to the electrical specifications in your service manual to determine circuit amperage and protection. Here's the machine display. These two openings right here can be used for card readers. In the middle here is the keypad. Down here is the delivery bin door. 
Inside the door on the upper left, you can find the machine serial number. Here's the view from inside the machine of the opening that can be used for card readers held on by four 11 32nd inch nuts. The keypad and the top opening are held in by four nuts as well. To access the control board, lift the cover off. Here below the red light is the service mode button. Down near the delivery bin is the iVent sensor system. Here's the infrared light emitter board that senses when a product passes into the delivery bin. The red light goes off when an item passes through. Find the key taped to the delivery box. It will have yellow tape on it with the word key on it. Remove it from the plastic packaging. Unlock the door. The power switch is inside the machine. Power on by flipping the switch. You will need to remove the plastic tray inserts. Simply lift up on the tray and remove the white plastic insert like so. When loading candy, be sure to choose a coil count that suits the product. There must be no interference when inserting the item into the coil. The item should not be too loose and be supported to provide good presentation. Place the coils at 7 o'clock. Using 10 count coils for mini donuts can help you fit 70 to 80 packages in one tray. Place the donuts in the coils vertically. Here we are using 9 count coils for snacks. To make sure the coils are correct, load 3 products, lift up the bags. If the coils come up, it's too tight. The snacks should be able to be removed from the coils. Snacks that are shoved into coils that are too tight for them have air released from the bag and become stale faster. Canadian large serving snack bags are bigger and need 9 count coils. US large serving snacks generally are okay with 10 count coils. To set the prices for the machine, first press the square service mode in the back of the machine. You can set prices for the machine by each item, by row, or a price for the whole machine. To set the price for each individual item, press 5 for the pricing menu. Press 1 to enter an item you would like to price. Then enter the item number you would like to price. Follow up by putting in the correct price for that item. Press pound to save the price. You can then repeat entering item numbers followed by the new price. Be sure to press pound to save each price. Pressing star three times will exit. You can then punch in an item number to see the new price. To set price by row, press 5 for pricing menu and then press 2 to set the price by row. Press the row number and the desired price. The top row is row 1. Press pound to save the price. Pressing star three times will exit. You can then punch in an item number to see the new price. To set price for the whole machine, press five for the pricing menu and then press three to set the whole machine. Type the price and then hit pound to save. Pressing star three times will exit. If a test vent attempt on a particular motor fails, controller will beep. Press service mode first. Then press 8 for test motor menu. Press selection number and wait. Press a different selection number to test other motors. If there's no product to vend, the coils will rotate twice. Press star twice to exit service mode. To test all motors, make sure you are in service mode. Press 9 and wait. The motor selection number is displayed while it is being tested. You are now ready to power up and program your machine. Turn the machine on via the power switch located on the inside panel and close the door. Enter the service mode by pressing the service mode button located on the control board. It is accessed through the hole in the top right corner of the control board cover. 
Then on the keypad, press the number 4 to get to the configuration mode and number 8 to get to the time and date menu. Press 1 and then the pound key twice to edit the year. Enter the current year and then press the pound key to save. Press the star key twice to back out. Then press the 2 key to get to the month selection and then the pound key twice to edit the month. Enter the current month and then press the pound key to save. Press the star key twice to back out. And then press the 3 key to get to the day selection and then the pound key twice to edit the day. Enter the current day and then press the pound key to save. Now set the current time. Press the star key twice to back out of the date mode and press the 4 key to get to the time. Press the pound key once to edit the time. Enter the current time and press the pound key to save. Press the star key 4 times to exit back to sales mode. The coin mechanism must be loaded with some level of each coins in order for the vendor to operate properly. Typically one roll of each coin type is needed to stay above the low level sensors. The coins need to be loaded into the coin mechanism by insertion into the front coin insert. First enter the service mode by pressing the service mode button located on the control board. It is accessed through the hole in the control board cover. Then press the number 1 on the door keypad to enter tube fill mode. On the display you will note that the corresponding tube total increases. You can fill with any denomination. The coins will be deposited in the correct tubes. The tubes may be filled on the coin mechanism itself, but this is not the preferred method. By using tube fill mode, the control board can then accurately determine coin levels.